The Fishing News is brought to you by Navionics, Okuma, Yozuri, Evinrude, Lama Glass, and the Star Island Yacht Club in Montauk, New York. I'm Jim Hutchinson with the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine here inside the meeting room where the striped bass hearing is going to be held for the New Jersey Division of Fish and Wildlife from here in Ocean City. It's the Ocean City Library on a Wednesday, September 4th. So when you get this, you'll get a few details from the backing of what's going on here. Now, by now, you know all the details about the options that are being presented by the ASMFC regarding striped bass. But still, surprisingly, earlier this week, the first meeting in New Jersey up in Roselle Park only had eight people in attendance in that North Jersey meeting. I'm thinking we're going to have a few more people here in South Jersey. But it's funny because the conversations that I'd heard from talking to a couple of pe people that went to that first meeting, said there was a lot of discussion about protecting the breeding class of striped bass. There was a lot of support for a slot fish, and there were some discussions too about doing some type of time and area closure on the Raritan Bay when those striped bass are staging for their pre-spawn run up the Hudson River. Now, we'll find more tonight. I'll have more to report next Thursday based on this meeting because I'm going to sit in on this and let you know what's going on in next week's video forecast. That way you're fully armed for the third and final meeting with the New Jersey Division of Fish and Wildlife to talk about striped bass. That's going to be Thursday, September 12th, 6 p.m. at the Bay Avenue Community Center in Manahawkin. You can get more details on this striped bass discussion. It's in our September edition of the Fisherman Magazine, which is out on newsstands. We also have several write-ups online at thefisherman.com. In fact, one of the discussion points for this series of meetings is circle hooks requirement or just continuing to promote it? Well, I've got a great video, it's Toby Lipinski's, on power snelling circle hooks. It's posted at thefisherman.com. It's certainly going to be something we're all going to be looking at in the future in terms of circle hooks for striped bass. We've already got them with sharks, we got them for billfish, and eventually I would say that we're probably going to have them for striped bass as well. So make sure you go over and check that out. All the details are at thefisherman.com. Now on the report front, we are getting some decent reports of striped bass, predominantly in back, in the back bays, the rivers, a certain canal that I can think of, a lot of smaller resident fish, a couple of keepers in the mix. Folks have been having a good time catch and release, primarily between dusk and dawn. The overnight hours, it seems like it's been eels at night, and at the uh, lower light conditions, top waters, plastics, and again, the canals and marshes. Of course, you know the bait is stacking up in the back, along the creeks, along those sedges, in those canals, in the lagoons. Baits, including the smaller white baits, finger mullet are starting to show pretty good, and especially those peanut bunker, which everybody loves to throw at uh, mahi offshore, and fluke as well. Now, Dave at Absecan Bay, I know he's been cast netting a lot of finger mullet down in the Absecan area. In fact, a lot of the shops now are starting to carry mullet. Uh, I, I was out earlier this week, saw some guys cast the net finger mullet behind LBI. Makes a great bait on a typical mullet rig for bluefish this time of year. Also slow tr slowly dragging through the sloughs for fluke that might be hitting in the wash. But definitely time to start thinking about matching the hatch when we have those baits in back. Right now, you might want to consider some of those tsunami talking poppers, those smaller ones. And of course, the smackets, the smacket juniors along the sod banks. Also, be sure to stock up for the fall run. As those v wakes those, those finger mullets start moving out of the creeks and out the inlets and down the beach, I love those little neck poppers by Super Strike. And they, we usually have that, what, tight window between, sometime between September 15th and October 15th. But make sure you stock up now and get yourself prepared. Of course, it's going to be interesting to see what happens to the bait after we get what we hope to be a glancing blow from Dorian by the end of the week. Of course, our prayers are with the folks down in the Bahamas. A deadly, devastating storm. You count your blessings when you see something like this come across. But as this storm moves its way north and hopefully due west, at, or due east at some point, but as it moves north and east along the coast, we are expecting at this point, middle of the week, that it's going to be passing fairly well offshore of New Jersey and Delaware. The problem is we've been getting some great tuna and billfish reports on the canyon grounds 
from the folks who found a short window between last week's heave and this coming week's heave as well. But the forecast from the Hudson to Baltimore this week for the rest of this week and through the weekend, of course, does not look very good, not promising at all. But again, hopefully folks will get back on the grounds early next week. And what this first major tropical event does for the fluke bite is also going to be a question mark as well. It still looks doable inshore Thursday, but you need to be aware that be, be expected to see winds on Friday, east northeast, 20 to 30 knots, switches around north northwest at 10 to 20 on Saturday. That's the early week forecast. Sunday is looking pretty decent for some inshore and surf action as it goes 5 to 10 west northwest by Sunday at the shore. But of course, what happens this time of year, a lot of times this tropical depression comes through and we don't know what the summer flounder or how they're going to respond. But I know folks are going to be getting out there and giving it a shot as soon as humanly possible. We do have some good reports right before of some big fish in North Jersey in those deeper waters. And I know guys are going to be going back out again to Ambrose or the Rattlesnake. Of course, any of the reef structure in New Jersey and down in Delaware are holding some good fish. And some of those fluke were hanging out in the inlets as well. Again, that's probably related to all of that bait stacking up. Now, if you decide to leave the boat in the slip this weekend, you still have a couple of options for finding some flatties by terra firma. I know Greg O'Connell had the boys out somewhere behind LBI earlier this week, right before the kids had to go back to school, had three keepers and three dozen throwbacks fishing on the sod. Good sign. We're also hearing the same thing, some of those uh, inlet points and beach pockets as well. John Petrosi, he sanded a couple of keepers uh, up uh, on Sandy Hook earlier this week. Another guy who reported 20 shorts to go with those couple of keepers as well. Meanwhile, on LBI this week, Sergey here, he got some kingfish rigs and fish bites over at Fisherman's Headquarters uh, before hitting the sands at LBI, hoping for some kingfish. And lo and behold, a nice sized pompano in the wash. This is definitely the time of year, especially with a tropical system, where we start getting some of those surprise catches. But pompano usually show up in the surf this time of year. They do make a tasty meal. And so does Spanish mackerel. I've had some in the surf folks are uh, chasing along some Spanish mackerel and bonita here and there, uh, but they're still inshore as well. In fact, John Fullhaber of Brick had a nice one here, a six pounder. To me, that's a monster. Uh, six pound Spanish mackerel while fishing the Skylarker at a Belmar on the inshore waters earlier this week. Now, if you're planning a trip to the west, perhaps staying back in Pennsylvania for the weekend ahead, you might want to know what's going on in the Sweetwater, right? Well, let's check in with George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Thanks, Jim. You know, the weather's playing a big part in all this fishing, and the upcoming weekend looks absolutely fantastic with temps in the 70s, uh, with some sunshine. So this should be great for everybody trying to get out. But this week, it's all about the personal bests, the PBs. We got three of them to share with you. First, I want to tell you about Brendan Hill. Got his PB rainbow on a Ned rig. He was bass fishing and picked up this beautiful rainbow. Great job, Brendan. Also, Jason Beck picked up this six-pound largemouth for his new PB. And that was on a Strike King Sexy Dog Junior. So a real good topwater bait there for getting those uh, those trophies. Great job, Jason. Now, Eric Goodstall, a regular here on our report, also picked up a 7-pound, 3-ounce largemouth for his personal best here in Monroe County. Jim, I'm telling you, the weather's picking up. The, the, it's cooling the water down and just some great fishing ahead. You guys got to come out and enjoy. From Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. It's always good to get a good report out of Fortescue. We got one this week when Richard Petroselli, he called me, he was fishing with his son Richard Jr. and friend Michael Albright on Petroselli's 22-foot Grady White called Miss Rita. Had a banner day on the Delaware Bay earlier this week for the Labor Day holiday. Best day ever is what Richard said to me. They caught 105 fish, brought 69 of them home to the cleaning station, which was a mix of croakers, spot, kingfish, bluefish, and their limit of weak fish. Good sign for folks heading down there on the Delaware Bay. Another close to home option for you could be Jetty Tog. From Belmar all the way down to Cape May and over into Delaware as well. This is a good time of year to find some of those blackfish along the Jetty Rocks. Whether you're going with a spin tackle, putting a, uh, a crab jig down with crab or more traditional terminal rigging, this is a great opportunity for you to find some inshore tog and there have been a few healthy specimens in there along those inlet rocks as well. We also had a surprise catch this week. This one was interesting. Tony's bait and tackle had a 14 pound, 27 inch triple tail weighed in that was caught in Little Lake Harbor. 
We're not disclosing any locations, but we'll tell you. It was a pink finesse that did it for eight-year-old Matthew Machia. Possible state record? Right now, Triple Tail's not listed as a state record in New Jersey. We'll have to check with these folks tonight and see what we find out. Now, if you're already missing those kitties after the first full week of the school year, don't sweat it. You got a great opportunity to spend the weekend with the kids at the 10th anniversary New Jersey Wild Outdoor Expo. That's this Saturday and Sunday, 10 to four, both days, rain or shine. That's being held 20, 299 East Collier's Mill Road in New Egypt. A great event from the New Jersey Division of Fish and Wildlife. It's an event that celebrates all of New Jersey outdoors, hiking, fishing, camping, hunting, what have you. Great event for the family. Of course, we hope it's gonna be a clear enough weekend for you. Uh, no indication that it shouldn't be right now, but keep an eye on the weather, especially if you're taking the boat out or hitting the beaches, you wanna keep an eye out on what that storm is doing and what kind of heave we're getting. But I am going to find out all the possible information I can get tonight, which is Wednesday, from the striped bass hearing here in Ocean City. I'll report back to you next week when we do the video forecast again next Thursday, just in time for you to make that third and final meeting. That's gonna be at the Bay Avenue Community Center in Manahawkin Thursday, September 12th. I'll share with you more information on that next week. Catch them up. We'll see you again next week at thefisherman.com. Win the incredible Steigercraft, Evan Rood Lorance Grand Prize Boat Package, and more in the Fisherman's 2019 Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. Get the details now at thefisherman.com.